All right, so we've talked to this guy. We've talked to this guy so far. What about this guy? I think here's the one we're missing. Good to see you, friend. Do I have deals set up for you, buddy boy? Good to see you too, friend. So what do you want? I've got smokes. They're cheap. Very cheap. I've got pills now. Great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. Spirits I can let go for 300 real. I also have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. Nice car. 300 real? See? There it is, Bratushka. The spirit. Let's buy the spirit. 300 real is a lot, but this has to be done. <laughs> this fucking necktie. It's our end game. This is just another stupid drunk idea I'm having and I'm attributing it to my necktie. Bratan, you don't understand. It's not just another drink. This is what our relationship has been building towards all these years. This is the climax, the mystery, the virginal sigh. The virginal sigh. You have to buy it from him. Get it off him. Kill him if you have to. Our ultimate fate depends on it. And the fate of many worlds. What? The lieutenant looks at you, looking at the bottle of spirits, then at Rosemary, suspiciously. <laughs> Good God. This, uh, oh, yay, speed, speed, so. Oh. Hi, by amphetamine, I mean speed. I think you didn't hear me when I said I'm a police officer. Sure did, buddy boy. That's why I said amphetamine. I mean speed. I mean amphetamine. I got both. Oh. I thought by speed you mean amphetamine. Hi, what I said. Right. Good, good, my man. Now, what can I offer you? Oh, my God, this guy. Oh. The system's been good to old Rosemary here, and I'm milking her like a bitch goat in the backyard. This guy's got a good accent. It's funny. You see, friend, man makes his own luck, and I made mine real good. Got my hands on three bottles of liquor X squeeze, sold two to the fellows around here, and immediately invested the profit. Invested in what? Bought cigarettes, bought beer, even bought a bit of speed. And look at me now. I've got everyone on my hook. The hook? Where is it? I can't see it. Thanks, Visual Calculus. Impressive entrepreneurship. Point to his vice stand. I approve. Mm -hmm. Cook them and cook them, huh? You want to buy something? Let's keep it moving. Why does the bottle spirits cost 300 real? It's real valuable. Worth every real, if you catch my drift. Got it from a bit of a business venture. Let him speak. You know, it's funny, actually. <laughs> He's finding it difficult to focus his watery gaze. What? what, what what's funny? This guy, this guy. What? Conversation might bring a discount. Where did you, uh, where'd you get the bottle from? Oh, this is medicinal spirits. The good stuff. What? Got it from the doctor's office. What? He ain't shitting you. Medicinal spirits are a blast, Bratan. The flaming truth of this joke of a world. Damn, I'm gonna get drunk off medicinal alcohol. Damn, that's, that's irresponsible. I got one of those scientific ampoules a few months ago. Oh. Torpedo, they call it. It's supposed to keep a man from taking a drink. What? Didn't stop me for shit, that's for sure. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. I don't, okay. I don't even understand what he's saying. I, I, I'm, I'm a, I don't know what is slang and what is, is being, is literal. I, I, I genuinely don't get it. It really isn't. In a week, the goddamn kidney started giving me all kinds of help. Finally, the missus took me to a private doctor's office. Not a charity, the real thing. Those arseholes. Those arseholes charged me four real to remove the damn thing. But I came out on top after all. But the idiots left me alone in there. Now, I used to teach high school biology. 
Oh. I know what doctors use to preserve dead fingies. He gets an excited gleam in his eye. Quite three cans of this blue medicinal stuff from the back room. Threw the snakes out and voila. What's left is this beautiful blue stuff. 98.7% almost pure alcohol. Oh, I actually think he might be telling the truth. Two I already sold to these fine gentlemen here. But this last one is yours for three real if you want it. Yeah, three real is great. Three real and it's yours, friend. The just make sure to enjoy that one, friend. <laughs> Bratan, I am so proud. <laughs> now, whatever you do, don't drink it. This deserves so much more than just regular oral consumption. Wait, where are you? Uh, like, what? Uh, am I, is this going to be an enema? The tie is so on the money there. Up the bum it goes. Oh no. But I don't want to put it in my bum. Who said anything about putting it up there? No, we're going to put it into a way more special place. So special. Just hang on to it. Keep it safe. Wait for my sign. Oh, okay. So, um. Soon. The time will come soon. Have patience, brave one. I'm getting a really dark vibe from this. This won't be pretty. I agree with you, Half Light. In the civilized world, it's a custom to tip the shopkeep, friend. But come back anyway. Fuck off. I don't need this. Blue? Medicinal spirit. Wow, it actually, wow, it says it actually is 98% pure alcohol. Hold on to the spirits and wait for the signal. Mmm, the signal, yes. Okay, well, let's look a bit more around this area, right? So here's the, um, here's the swing in that area over there. Well, wait, no, that's right. This is, I totally forgot. This is an old map of what this place was supposed to become. And it is no longer what it has. A drop in temperature, an easy flow there, an empty street before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries, no more drivers smoking on hitch steps. What the smoke? Silence. What the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened. Across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley, craters filled with a black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is gray already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. 4, 18, 21, 4, 1. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. His boyfriend is on his way home. He brings tins of meat and vegetables with him. Their pockets are heavier with money, but only slightly. Heavier is good. Number 312D. Young girls used to come here huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. Craters popped the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of the flow of trade. There's one bump on the road. A dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away. Oh. Right at the turn. Oh no. Tragedy comes from the wheels of a fast RCM vehicle. Hurrying to work. The cold washes over you. The sound of the sea has grown distant. No. Did, did the wind moves the air? Did I? A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curve did of I, his hair. Did I did I run over the dog? I'd like it if I didn't run over the dog.
I can't go over this. I'd like it if I didn't run over the dog. I'd be very happy if I did not was not the one who ran over the dog. The city music is really intense. Little black swallow circles above you. You hear it chirp. Or chirrup. What the fuck that means. Oh, hello. Bar runs in the west, the source is upstream. A broken pipe. Money! Let's go, Kim. You didn't crash every MC in Revishal, hopefully. You know, I, th I thought that immediately. I was like, oh, there's quick travel. There's quick travel. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. I was so worried. There's quick travel, let's go. Dead Simone, Fat Smash uh, receiver. Someone hung up too hard to work hard to smash that plastic dome. A metal payphone under a yellow plastic dome. You could use it to call someone unless you're out of change. You hear the tone. The machine is inoperable. Okay, well, it's inoperable, so I'm not going to spend any money on it. Because I'm actually pretty poor still, so I don't really want to spend too much money. You can imagine why calls become terrible sometimes. Oh, from looking at this thing? Yeah. Buzz, hum, the electricity flows to watch the audible power. Someone has left an unidentifiable article of clothing on this railing. It smells really bad. Really bad. It's streaked with dried seagull shit and tangled with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that there might be a jacket beneath the crust of filth. <laughs> Please tell me you're not taking that with you. Why not? It's a guano encrusted jacket, and you're already carrying around enough as it is. Damn. Harsh, but fair. Filthy rag has been at the mercy of the elements for quite some time. It's streaked with seagull shit and abnormally stiff from God knows what natural process. You can't even tell what brand it is. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. Oh, God. It's a sordid, filthy tail. Not for the weak. Are you sure you can stomach it? Hmm. It occurs to you that you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather the thick crust of jetsam and seagull shit that ensconces it. That is absolutely putrid. It smells like a dead sea creature, tangled in gray strands of seaweed. It must have spent quite some time in the water before the tide deposited it ashore. What's the crust made of? Somehow, it was carried or dragged to the boardwalk. If not by human hands, then perhaps the feral dogs that prowl the beaches at night. The faint impressions of many footprints are also present. Though it's impossible to tell what kind or how many, suffice to say, the jacket spent some time on the ground before someone draped it over the railing. We'll have one. I'm just gonna learn about this disgusting jacket. All right, screw it, I'm curious. I wanna know about the jacket. The crust is hard. This jacket spent at least a day baking in the sun. Who knows what happened to it then? Somewhere high above the city, a pair of seagulls trace loops through the air. They are like the bombardiers of the aerostatic brigades, gliding above a target-rich environment. All of a sudden, the Bombay doors open, and their white glittering payload rushes to the ground. Splat, an explosion of white on a man's shoe. A curse goes up, but the birds do not hear. Why did I just spend all this time thinking about seagull shit? It's too late. You've already thought about it, and now your hands are covered in muck. Ew, 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 flick your hands. Now you're just flicking that shit everywhere. Oh no. This is a disaster. Oh no. Never get the smell out. Oh no. Oh no. That was, that was so pointless. 
Kim told me it was pointless. Why didn't I listen to him? Why didn't I listen? I'm sorry, Kim. Why didn't I listen to you? The Mega Beano's prescription lenses. <laughs> Wait. Discovering your inner Beano. Minus one perception. Nausea inducing hell glasses. Whose idiotic idea were square and beige plastic frames anyway? Beige is a color that does not look good on anyone. Not to mention that seeing the world through these exceedingly thick lenses feels almost nauseating. Hmm, postcard. Money! I'm just gonna make this boardwalk habitable. I haven't done a particularly great job at it. I'm gonna go out of this area and back down because I'm curious what's over here. So this is the church then. Oh my. You know, I'm very happy I got this uh, plus one XP for every little blue, th uh, every little circle I touch. So I needed it. Hello. And Mikhail noticed the windows. Especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. All man says to his son, pointing to the weather worn ruins. He sees you approaching and smiles. You officers, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez? I'm Tan Heilostam. You must be Kim Kitsuragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. Oh, the man is very German, but, but I've never. I've never... How does you know Kim? Nice to meet you. Hypertext? Yes, hypertext. Young Carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. He's just making up fancy words. <laughs> this doesn't mean anything. Thanks, Half-Light. Oh, yes. So, Mikhail, they had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows on the south wall. No, I can't say that we've met before, but I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad-made adventure program. We've been getting really into verbs lately. Man's teaching his son how to how to code. But I assume you're not here for giant worms when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revachol West. This man is your half brother. You feel it. But why? You have any money? I do have some money, yes, but that's not what's really important here. He's not gonna give you money. What are you doing? Clearly, you were just profiling. <laughs> I want the money. Oh, no, I don't have it on me, officer. I was talking in more general terms. He feels uncomfortable. I'm just spending time with my kid here, showing him around the lesser known parts of our hometown. It wouldn't be wise to carry huge amounts of cash on such expeditions. Nor care, nor bring your son with you, if I'm being honest, but, you know, to each their own. Not that he would have to worry about being robbed. He looks surprisingly buff. Does he work out? Oh, that's the conversation for me. Do you work out? I do some Lomantang stick fighting now and then. What? It's an anthropological heritage of the Lomantang people. A martial art of sorts, but what not a lot of books mention is that it also carries a cultural significance among the Lomantangs, as it used to be the best means of showing off to look for a bride, which, interestingly enough, brings us to the socio-economic structure of the traditional rural tribes of the Lomantang Isles, which, 
It goes on to give you a detailed overview of their way of life, the amiable and slightly nervous smile not once leaving his face. But anyway, I'm boring you with details again. You were saying... Now, I'm not really interested in the practice. I just want to know how often you work out. Now and then, what's like, like once a week? Lomantang stick fighting is a little like a Berolidin addiction. I've been practicing it for nearly 20 years now, so you could say that my doses have grown a little peculiar. Wait, what does this man know about Perolidon addiction? <laughs> you got me, detective. But my history should hardly come as a surprise. Isn't that the stuff that, um, that Roy gave me for, like, uh, dealing with post-nuclear fallout? Here's a former junkie. I can recognize one when I see it. Thanks, Authority. Dad's fighting with sticks every night after dinner for four hours. He has a special room for that and a special costume. Damn, what a baller. That's right, Mikhail. It also has a meditative quality. Helps to clear my head. But anyway. <laughs> All right. But it's not just any empty old building. What not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of Felt Electrical. And Felt, which now sells ink cartridges mostly, was once a top dog in the turn-of-the-century cybernetics boom. Hold on. What's R&D? Goddamn encyclopedia. Even I know that. It's research and development. It looks old and weathered, with seagulls picking up... Of course I failed it, because I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. Bushy undergrowth has taken hold of the collapsed rooftop. Some kind of bird has set up a nest on a broken windowsill. That's not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferrotape manufacturer remains. They started out as a midway electronics outfit in Königstein two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. I mean, this guy could just be here to throw exposition at me, and that might be his point, but I don't- I don't know what it is about his face that, like, it makes me feel, like, almost uncomfortable. He- it's either, like, just a genuinely nice guy, or there's, like... I don't know what it is. I th you know what it- you know what it reminds me of? He- he looks like, um, David. Uh, the- the live-action version of The Last of a Show. Their version of David. The- the Preacher. Guy in like the eighth episode or seventh episode, I forget which one it was. The live action uh, actor. It looks like him, which makes me immediately go into fight or flight mode. Half flight, save me. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines, but Felt had an ace up their sleeve. Or should I say, they were developing an ace up their sleeve? I'm mixing my metaphors here. Uh huh, and then that was, then that was ace. It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building that they developed prototypes for a tape computer. Mm -hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferrotape ribbons, portable enough to be a take-it-home solution. Wait, you mean- Revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bring them to the average consumer. Oh, okay, so just a home computer. Which is a feat of engineering, even today's giants, Rain, ICN, and Zam, haven't achieved yet. Indeed, what? The revolution! Ah. Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Revachol backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes, possibly from this very building. So everyone else All has it in the in the more developed world than us. All of this was built by Feld, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management, Feld built this side of town for R and D. Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. A pleasure wheel? Oh, like a Ferris wheel. Perhaps reminded of a childhood memory. It's clear he would prefer there were a big wheel lighting up the coast. Yes, to lure in their star engineers. This part of Martinez was nothing but reeds before it felt arrived. They had to make the prospect of living here attractive. It was supposed to become a global center for innovation in cybernetics. But, oh, I'm afraid it didn't end well for the boys. But this the boys. is a bit too dark for little Mikael here. Now, if you were to ask about ah. tape computers... They died. They used them for military communications, but also to write and send out press releases. The most notorious example being Le Decret de Mars, 
What's the Mars Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies and world governments by the newly created Commune of Revachol on the 7th of March in the year 02. It's a beautiful piece of text actually. A singer-songwriter I know, Charette, called it a love poem to Revachol on her political concept album Bon Bessier d'un Solint. You should read it. Every local library in Revachol stocks a copy of the decree. Are you sure? The library lady is kind of I tried annoying. to get Mikhail to memorize it. Tried to. Someone was much too interested in Worms to be paying any attention. The kid takes a peek at the green and silver Worm on the cover of the book, already forgetting about this part of the discussion. Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirely of tape would look like. But mm -hmm. word has it, they were very elegant. Exquisite. Alien I wonder if I could have asked him about the, the cube that I had, you know? Like the big cube thing. If you'd be curious ago, about it. I did Unfortunately, I sold it to Roy, so. I guess you could say. I was a special consultant for an exhibition at the Womty Dumpty Dum Center in Vredeport, Oranje. It <laughs> it what? What? Lengthy <laughs> what was those words? Was head curator at the time. This was before the twins Keith and Guy Jews joined the team. Trying to. Wait. Did he just say Womty Dumpty Dum Center? He did it. He said Womty Dumpty Dum Center. Like it's the most natural thing in the world. Okay, and so it's not just me. What the hell is a Wompty Dompty Dom Center? And who the hell are Keith and Guy Juiced? I love how th all three of my four uh, faculties were all very upset about that. I need to know. The Wompty Dompty Dom Center for Contemporary Arts. The exhibition itself drew on Lagerman's notion of memory, and so there were some parallels. That's why the head curator, Paul Ackerman, chose to... You're making this up. Kim, is he making this up? In fact, I'm not. The Wompty Dompty Dom Center is a place you can visit if you're ever in Vredeport and are ever in the market for an exhibition space slash contemporary art research center. What? Hmm. It's a thought? But perhaps I should return to the tape computers. As I was saying, the device itself was very elegant, fragile even. One could write directly on the tape using a special chemical solution. <laughs> the machine would then analyze the handwriting perform operations and project output onto a white screen. It was a beautiful, delicate thing. Very, very cool. Though I understand the socio-economic causes of the revolution, it pains me to imagine the revolutionary setting fire to this precious device. But so they did. The felt playback experiment vanished into the fires of 07. Who knows? Maybe it was an accident, or maybe they didn't want the technology to end up in the wrong hands. Either way, they're all gone now. All three versions of the prototype. Nothing but debris and ashes remain inside that building. 29-year-old Wunder twins, Guy and Keith Juice, are the stars of the show with their bomber jackets and white sneakers. Head curious this art exhi exhibition. It's the Wompty Dompty Dompty Wompty Dompty Dommiest event of the year and all the cool kids have RSVP'd. Where are you if you are not there? God damn it. But of course, <laughs> what else? Thanks. No, thanks to you for having me and little Mikael here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation indeed. I just listened to a man talk about computers. I just specifically talked to this man about computers for like 20 minutes. About the fact that they were going to have house house computers before the revolution. That was the entire po po point of this conversation. I do not know why. You see. A once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D. A slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now, only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says, tomorrow is just a whisper away. Looks like tomorrow never came. Hmm. I feel like this is one of those things that maybe makes more sense to the developers than it does to me. Maybe, I don't know if any of them were around during a particular uh, socioeconomic collapse, perchance. Um, that really put a damper on stuff somewhere in like Eastern Europe, maybe. I'm too American to truly be sure.
Hmm. I'm gonna go back up. Oh. The remaining windows rattle from a strong gust of wind. They're covered in a thick layer of grime. They must have been like this for 40 years. Dripping water falls from a high place. All you can see is the shadow of a collapsing staircase. No. I won't even try. You know... Takes his glasses I off. I had a partner once. They called him Eyes because he had to show me things. It's that bad. Oh, wow. His eyesight's that bad? Holy shit. This partner of his, Eyes, things didn't end well. It saddens him to say his name. Don't even ask. He wouldn't answer. Maybe some other small talk. This is not small talk. Can you still shoot, though? But okay. Well enough, actually. It's odd how that works. I'm no sharpshooter, but I pass my shooting courses 7 out of 10. Hmm. Okay. Good should offer him the uh, the really thick rimmed glasses. Ooh. Ice. The smell. It's awful and familiar. Hold on. That is awful. It doesn't help. You can still smell it. Damn it. Keep it in now. Don't overreact. Breathe. What is this? Don't you recognize it? That idiot's pungency. That faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. Kim is standing on nothing. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. Oh boy. The lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his- Oh mind. shit, I thought this was a guy sleeping. I think he's dead. Eyes up, detective. Something's not right here. Trash can first. There's some tear, an empty cigarette package, and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you find. That's fine, it's still money. No, there's more in there. Ooh! Livis strawberry liquor, plus some pills in the bottles too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. Oh, come on. A tragedy. Looks in the can, eyes watering from the smell. He shakes his head with genuine sadness. Cigarette Whoever package? It here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. Mayonnaise on and ketchup on a kebab? Shish kebab, Revachon. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. Am, am I am I the wrong one here? Am I the problem? To, to see to see mayonnaise and ketchup on, on a kebab? Am I the one in, in the wrong? Cause that sounds awful. That sounds like some some horrid American like like ripoff crap. A man lies on the working board. class corpse. Holy shit, that portrait. Jesus. At an angle. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits. In his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. What the hell? Half of his body has slipped between the cracked boardwalk, starting with the right leg. The fall has left him broken, contorted like a sad puppet. Looks like he hit his head on the bench. The smell is not as bad as a two-week-old corpse, but it's definitely heading there. Hold on. The lieutenant squats into the corpse and examines his face. The two bulging eyes stare back at him, void of any signs of life. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is, has been dead for two days. No longer. We need Holy to shit. investigate. Holy shit. Another dead body. This is your job. Steal yourself. Crap. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Breathe. Study the man's clothes. He's wearing mud caked boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. Okay, so there two days. Of kebab sauce on his chest. So two days means that um I couldn't have uh have been here yet because the 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 water lock is closed until today, so you find some sunflower seeds and a rain soaked library card folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. Say so There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. Mm -hmm. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. A 
an empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. It almost sounds like he the floorboard broke out underneath his foot and he fell and cracked his neck on the on the uh the bench. Be very, very careful where you step here. Step on the floorboards. <laughs> Wait, step on the floorboards as in as in like test them? Or or be an idiot and like test like and like con uh I'm gonna I'm gonna assume they mean test them. They screech under your feet ominously. It's hard to say whether the dead man's weight was the cause of the boardwalk to break. It definitely looks fragile. Okay. You see waves churning below. Something cracks beneath your feet. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. Mm. This is where he came out of himself, drop by drop, when he was unconscious. It took three, maybe four minutes. Okay, so yeah, the thing broke. He he sliced his head open on the side of a of a bench, and knocked himself out. And then his blood just he just he just bled out. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. That sucks. So random too. A point seven five liter Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. At least he, uh, at least he probably didn't like feel it. You know, he slipped, hit his head, and that was it. It's mid market spirits with a slight touch of menthol. The man meant to enjoy himself, have a good time. Tear all around us. Hmm. I'd prefer if you didn't collect them this time. It's not proper. True. It feels disrespectful. I agree, but I am also poor. Rubowski spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum too? Confirmed. Nearly the whole pack is there solidified on his lower rear teeth. He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. Oh. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario, even the chewing gum. It's always the same. Kind of like for smokers. Chat, if you ever uh, take chewing gum to cover the smell of you smoking cigarettes, let me be perfectly honest with you, it does not work. It never works. Anyone who will ever tell you that you don't smell like 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 cigarettes is lying. It is a horrendously pungent smell, and it and unless you are personally a heavy smoker and don't smell it for yourself, if someone near you is telling you that they are they are not telling you the truth. It is very obvious. In a ditch, of you a are not getting away ditch with one. anything. He thinks a young father. Then he shakes his head to make the memory stop. Oh, fuck. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still dangling through the hole. You have to be quite inebriated to fall that bad. Well over a liter of pure ethanol, three bottles of wine, or one and a half of spirits. Do you? I assumed he just lost his foot and went that way and then slid his neck open. His expression is dull, like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining mm. on his mustache. His eyes, empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. Height, 170 to 175 centimeters. Curly hair, stout build, age approximately 50 to 60 years. Damn, visual calculus. I feel like, <laughs> damn, I, I, I feel like going logic would actually be quite the interesting playthrough. He was confused when he died. Confused and alone, most likely. Overcome with the awful surprise of it all. He was just about to head home. The first step back home proved to be his last. Hmm. Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. 
It looks south the way you but came. That's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? At least this man knew how to party. God damn Imagine it. Imagine the same scene without the bottle. Now that would be just sad. God damn it. This is an omen, a sign from above, that you need to stop drinking. What we're witnessing here is a demise of a great party beast. That leather jacket, an empty bo vodka bottle. Kiss your fingers? You know what? I'll go with Inland Empire. He looks like me. I could have ended up just like him, dead on some empty boardwalk with a bottle next to my corpse. Well, at least you're not married. Um... Kim, I don't... Uh... Uh, I don't know if Kim realizes what he said. Points to the ring on the man's left hand. Or, what if you are? Shut up. Married to your drink. That's for sure. Shut up, brain. Shut up. But let's try to not run ahead. For now, all we know is that he's an unidentified middle-aged man found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. Oh, no. Wait. Oh. I'll look at the library card in a moment. Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. What about the kebab? What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the parks. I want the kebab. Kebab heals people. Oh, yes. About alcohol poisoning and liver failure? Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. Yeah. They'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. I think they actually have plenty of resources. I just don't think the coalition much gives a shit. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure. From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. What about field autopsy? Field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal. Mm. And this looks like a simple accident to me. I would agree. I'd say we should just write down head trauma in the autopsy report and leave it at that. It would save us at least two hours of unnecessary work. Yeah, that's fine. We have more important things to do anyway. Good call. The guys at processing can take care of the rest. You know, I'd like to take the case. All right. We should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station from my kinema. Let them know we are taking the case. <laughs> Oh boy. Some kind of superstar. Superstar. Here we are. They say the world isn't ready for a rock and roll cop. <laughs> no one wants their state monopoly on violence to be mixed with celebrity worship. They claim to know it would be dangerous for detectives to rise to the ranks of demigods and have sexual encounters with barely legal cover girls. It was fun it for a bit, now it's insane, less fun. They say. To all this, you say. Fuck off and die in a cool voice. You people have in a no cool idea voice. how good these cops are gonna get. They're gonna crack 20 cases a day. In the future, cops will be like astrophysicists or prime ministers or prophets. And you're the first one. Oh my goodness gracious. That is a very cool cat moment indeed. Minus one logic, price of self-delusion. <laughs> Learning cap for calculus raised to a six, suggestion to six, electrochemistry to six, and composure to six. That's funny. That's very funny. Unfortunately, oh my god, my logic is at negative one. I have I have actually negative one logic. Holy shit. I am I've gotten so stupid. Alright, library card. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central General Public Library Card, issued to Billy Mejean, expires July 53. Ah, uh, okay. 
So it's not okay. It's not the person we thought it was. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Thank God for that. Radio thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers too. Ooh. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial zero zero. Good. Mm. We should give them a call from my kinema. See if we can learn anything. I'm very curious about this person, the dead body on the boardwalk. We have a lot more of the day left for us anyway, though. Oh, in order to go over there, I have to go all the way around? Okay. Oh, there's some people over here. Oh, this this guy might be the might be the uh the person that uh that the, the old lady is wants to talk the, the the husband. I just want to click on these things first real quick. Hey, hey, what's up, dude? How's it going? Here we go. There nice we go. And easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gym. Oh, that is a thick accent. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. Is that the police? Why are the police here? <laughs> Morel, the cryptozoologist. Gary, the crypto fascist? What? Don't worry, Gary. I'll handle it. Oh my god. Have you guys seen the have you guys seen the the um the the Australian Rick and Morty? The uh, oh, it's go to Bendigo to get McCube, Morty. <laughs> the, the, the yelling gets me that exact same feeling. To what do I owe the pleasure? Lena sent me. She's been really worried about you and is waiting for you to get back. Of course. Ack. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken. And we can't go all the way around the 881. The wild, uh, I'm going to withhold the story. It was fine when I crossed it. Oh, good. We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower. No, me hubby is dead. <laughs> Oh, I filled it with diesel, Morty. Did he say we can go back now? Shut up, Gary. Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we go in. For all his passion, this man is diligent and patient. You could learn things from him. Oh, fine. Okay. Hmm. Well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for it. Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? And I suspect it may have also developed other specialised techniques to protect itself from predators, all scientists in our present case. It's my hypothesis that it has I'm about to spend another entire 20 minutes listening to, to cryptids. To interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. But I cannot describe how these defenses work, much less how they evolve, without studying a live specimen. Yes. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> You're beginning to suspect there's something paranatural about this phasmid. Is it now? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. <laughs> One known species of phasmid called the Megaphasmodea zoensis. Ah, oh, shit. Come of again? Forearm. So, uh... Seems puny, to be honest. Oh, uh, that's, that's a dick joke. That's a dick joke. That has to be a dick joke. Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulindian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any, 
Sure. Crypto zoology's career, but to study it and its defenses, find out how it stayed hidden so long, would be glory itself. Very little, I'm sorry to say. Hmm. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. I, I, I really want to, um, I really, really want to have dialogue related to the fact that I internalized the cold of Mamadakwa. I've also got points I can spend, but I'm going to wait for a little bit. Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, if there's no Kim? proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? Kim? I know it's real. It says, briskly enough that even he seems taken aback by it. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. Yes, the most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martinez specifically. Uh, that's a thick ass. Uh, Martinez. It's the first credible sighting in several a thick decades. Thick accent. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for this species, but with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Maybe it died out. Have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. What? Um. Got it. Parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis, meaning the females don't need males to reproduce, makes it easier for a species to survive in adverse conditions. This arouses no special feelings in me. And it shouldn't. Nature does not concern herself with ethical propositions. As a scientist, my interest is strictly dispassionate. See how I mean. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly. So I'm sure they'll do the trick. If I can, uh... <laughs> yes. She died with some pride. More than some. He admires this about him. Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can't get back out. At least, that's the intention. So it becomes too fat the to leave? The perfect solution. But we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores, of course. But we've hypothesized that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a oh. tiny, chittering swarm. That's horrifying. They'll work, I assure you. But the predatory hypothesis, using locusts as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. Well, it only works if they're around. I mean, right, even that, that's fine. What? Uh, at least he's pretty eager for you to return, buddy. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. Hmm. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. Why is Gary the crypto fat? Okay, a couple things. One, Gary the crypto fascist has a completely different haircut than this balding Einstein-looking guy over on he on the character here. And also, why is the background the way it looks? And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. What? Won't let Lena down. Sounds like the cryptozoologist's wife shares a special connection to the phasmid somehow. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting on record. One of only four this century, and it's hers. Oh. Yes. That's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell. Not mine. <laughs> Needless to say, 
You must ask her about the mysterious phasmid. I must. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. Oh, he's, he's getting old. His spirit may be willing, but his body might be too old to endure the rigors of the coast. Come on, come back to the whirling, warm up, check back on the traps. Oh no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the Fairsmith were to starve while we were sitting tea at the hostel? He's dead set on this. What if we check the traps for you? Kim is not gonna be happy about this. We didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Chaos is my method, I'm its scion. Yes, No. Indeed. Both require a great deal of research, attention to detail, and above all, persistence. There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouse is there. It's okay. very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there. On your way to the old radio tower, after the church. Okay. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed, by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them, you should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. That seems like a lot. Do we really have time for this? Extracurricular venture. What? Aren't you having fun, Kim? Even relative to examining a weak old corpse, I'm not sure mucking about in the reeds qualifies as fun. But have it your way, detective. I will. If you think it's important, you have been right before. <laughs> Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. But if I encounter her in the wild, that's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do. I'll spray you with the pheromone mixture I developed. What the hell? It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the side of you. It's quite potent. Will last you about a week. Lay it on me, thick. Odd smelling spray, a double helping as you present your other armpit and then give a satisfied nod. This is the smell of dying reeds, of longing crumbling into the water. I hope you're not buying this. He dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. <laughs> it is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Oh my god. Oh, and I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. Looks so at the lieutenant with disdain, then puts the spray back in the pocket. Ooh, harsh, but Morel, you know, Kim, you've been giving him a lot of shit lately, so you kind of deserve it. Right. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Whatever he thinks about this detour, it's clear that these men are exhausted and in need of assistance. Finally, someone's talking sense. Gary, why do you sound the way you do? Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. All right, it's all just question. I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. He seems reluctant to talk about himself, but he'll open up if you prod a little. Okay, so the childhood dream. It's not child's play. Just because I have to trape through the mud every so often. That's not what I meant. Uh, have you ever discovered a cryptid? No. Very oh. few cryptids are ever discovered, and not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid, of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Shemni. That's a long which ass is 4, name. 4,082 items long. About 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Wait, so 4,080, oh, sorry, 2,082? Two are categorized. Are okay. Confirmed discoveries. Uh, oh. The rest are in differing stages of discovery. Oh, oh, it's the list. And data collection. The list, okay. 4,082 items long, 2,000 are confirmed as uh, uh, hoaxes, and only two are confirmed. Yes. 
the Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quiet and remarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. <laughs> then the insulin and the infasin will be the third. Indeed. If our expedition is it's a forceful gaze. Every paper in the world will report <laughs> on it. From Revachol to Dushan too. It will be a zoological miracle. The hair on your arms stand up. Electricity. Sounds like reeds hissing. Real. I know you think one is a respectable profession, while the other is superstition. Everyone does. No, I'm gonna be nice to these people. Indeed. My I, I, even though I personally think this is all total bullshit, the, 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 out of all the individuals I've met in, 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 in uh, Martinez, truly surprising might happen. these are some of the most acceptable, because they're just out to do a, a, an honest, their honest adventure. And out of all the people we've met, they've, they, there has been a wide variety of problem people. And, and you know, I, I want to be nice to them. This nice old couple seems like they're worth helping. Your nerve endings tell you there is no such thing as a positive surprise. Has there anything truly surprising ever happened no, to you? As I said, I have yet to catch a cryptid, although I have come close. Everything from forgotten regional law to newspaper. Nah, accounts. that's enough. Yes. Right. Specific what cryptids? Precisely. I usually discuss these things with specialists, so I don't know what. You need to ask him about specific cryptids. Cryptids you've heard about from Lena or his friend Gary. He won't just talk. So many tales about cryptids from this man's. A willow person. It's a long story. One non specialist would find rather dull. They're not people, really. Some argue they aren't really animals, as they seem to have evolved directly from trees. Oh. They're very, very thin, almost flat in fact, and can camouflage themselves easily, wrapping themselves around trees and blending in with the tree bark. In that way, they're not too dissimilar from the phasmid we're looking for here. You probably have. Mm. Gary and I painted an entire grove's worth of trees in slow drying paint. It was a bright lavender color. I was hoping one of the willow people would get paint on it and not be able to camouflage itself. Oh, oh, you painted a grove worth of trees? After waiting in hiding for hours, I saw a figure slip from one of the trees, a lavender shadow dashing through the grove. Oh, geez. I chased it with a knit. Not very elegant. You can't be elegant in the field. And, well, it was faster than me. A lavender shadow. I know you think we were snacking on funny mushrooms. It's easier to mock someone than to admit that the world might be more interesting than you've imagined. Furthermore, I'm not saying it was a confirmed sighting. I'm painfully aware of what goes into verifying such things. There is a serious possibility that I saw a squirrel or a trick of the light. I am my own harshest critic. Hmm. Confirmed. It's 100% verified and meets all the standards of an authentic cryptid sighting. Well, it was the, the giant of Kokonor was like the mountainous one, right? That's impressive, I guess. But have you seen it with your own eyes? No. Of course you haven't. Okay. I haven't had a chance to travel to Coco. I don't know. No. Oh, I that's why. Never will. The Samus skill. I, I want to. I want to talk about the Mama Dakwa. I have the thought internalized. The last eight years, I fear this mindless barbarism may have wiped out the elusive creature entirely. Sightings of towering luminosities have grown rare recently. Well, they once used to be constants. The gnome. Formerly the most dangerous, yes. But do you know the most dangerous living cryptid? He doesn't want to make it feel like you knowing it is some big deal. 
No. The most dangerous cryptid is a carnivorous ruminant, known colloquially as the Dread Moose. Get out of here. No, but we're not get out of anywhere. The Dread Moose is a widely reported cryptid from Arda. It subsists entirely on flesh and has even been known to dig up fresh graves in search of sustenance. Oh, gee, a, a, a violent, murderous, car like, moose. Human I was going to say carnivorous, but that's where I hit it. ...deep in the forest, torn apart, then trampled into the mulch by large hooves. In fear from that, what you will. Just like an ordinary ardent moose. How can you tell if it's the ordinary or the dread guy? You can't. That's what makes it so dreadful. And hard to identify. I am 100% behind the Dread Moose. I absolutely believe it does exist. Of course you do. Shut up, Kim. The bodies found in the forest <laughs> is one piece of physical evidence. There's more. Sightings in Vasa reaching back four centuries. But, of course, nothing satiates the skepticism of... A detective. Pardon me, I did not wish to seek conflict. It's simply my training to question things. Understood, Lieutenant. Hmm. Oh, everyone knows about that one. Thanks to Professor Mijanu being the talk of the town for a time. A bit of jealousy there. He'd want that glory, truth be told. Even if he'd have to inject himself with bacteria to get it. Oh, that's the bacteria guy. Although, probably because her life ended as a result of her working gutler. No one remembers her contributions to the search for the Nong Ok. A flightless cursor owl found in the Seminine Isles. Its long legs permit the Nong Ok to run faster than any other avian. Perhaps any other animal. Who knows? When it's not hunting its prey in its manner, the Ok hangs from tree branches, like a bat, waiting to dive on hapless prey below on the jungle floor. Mijanu liked extreme animals, you see. One of the few figures of the academic establishment I respect. Really a shame she disappeared. Oh, decades ago. In the 30s. I didn't know her personally. So during the war? The no, no, it ended in 07, right? She still stood before us. Even though she had unusual courage for someone from the other side. No offense, officer. All right, hey, yeah. By all means. Damn, that was a lot of talking. God damn, Morel likes to chat. That patch of reeds over there, it's a great place to hide something. What? Kind of out of the way, being so close to the water. I don't see anything interesting. You don't have a reason to. Yet. What is this about? Nothing. Just a hunch. The hunch passes, leaving you there, by the old boy bobbing in the water. Time to go. What do you mean, just a hunch, Inland Empire? I don't like that. I don't like what you're trying to do. It's like, it's like that weird, uh, female voice saying, um, saying for me to check under the floorboards and then I'm not able to check under the floorboards anymore. What do you- Mmm. Mmm. I'm a little smad. I want to know 